In 2019, social media is going to get even more difficult for businesses. Supply of content already far exceeds the demand and paid reach is falling dramatically. Plus, all the platforms want to make you pay to play. But organic social media isn't dead. You just need to get inventive, you just need to be a bit different. So today, I'm going to share with you some nifty tricks and tips that's going to really help your business own social media in 2019. So let's do this. 10 actionable tips on social media for business. Hi guys, my name's Luke and I work in the marketing team here at Growth Tribe. So let's jump in. Tip number one, the first half an hour of a post going live is gonna make or break it. And in the modern age of social media, this tip is arguably gonna have the biggest impact on your social posting. So what's tip number one? Get engagement early on. The social algorithms for every platform love this. Take Instagram, for example. The algorithm works in three stages. Stage one, as soon as you post something, the algorithm's gonna start to show that new post to a small sample of your audience and then monitor how fast that post post gets engaged with. For stage two, Instagram's gonna compare the level of engagement the new post is receiving to a post made at a similar time of day previously. Stage three, is your photo attracting a lot of engagement? Great, Instagram's gonna start showing it to a larger proportion of your audience and it may even showcase it on the Explorer page for a chance at super virality. So this can be the big win. If the post continues to attract strong engagement, it's gonna stay at the top of more people's feed, increasing reach and the chance of extra engagement with the photo or brand page. And the story is the same for every social platform. You really need to be driving engagement early on. This is gonna help both your reach and the longevity of the post. And if you don't, expect to be drowned out by the other three billion social accounts that are gonna be posting content. Quick bonus tip, know your algorithms. This is gonna be fundamental to mastering social media in 2019. It's really gonna inform your tactics, help you excel and definitely beat the competition. I've actually broken down how all the social algorithms work for every platform in the resource in the comments below. Tip number two, time to get a little bit hacky. You wanna be getting your post ranked really early on. So a really big tip is where possible, avoid outbound links at all costs. Every social media platform wants you to stay on their platform. Basically, it means they can serve you more ad impressions and ultimately make more money. But wait, what? Surely you need to share outbound links on social media. Absolutely. Luckily, there are workarounds. So I need to thank Jean for this one, our resident LinkedIn expert, as this example comes from their platform. The great thing with LinkedIn is it allows you to do two things. One, it allows you to edit a previously published post, and two, it allows you to copy links to specific comments. So what does this mean? It means you can avoid outbound links in the main body of the post by publishing and then placing the link in the first comment. After that, you just need to copy the comment link and place that inside the body of the post. We've typically seen a one to 200% increase in post reach since we started using this technique. Do you know any cool tricks on the other platforms like this? We'd love to hear them in the comments below. Bonus tip. Now this is something I love to do on social media and it's using tools like Rebrandly to mask your links. There's three benefits to this. Benefit one, they look much nicer and much more on brand. Benefit two, you can also use a tool like ClickMeter to track even more metrics like the number of clicks, the geography of those clicks, and even the platforms and organizations those clicks came from. Benefit number three and my absolute favorite is you can add retargeting pixels to these branded links. This will allow you to fire paid selling ads at the people that engage with relevant content. Moving on, tip number three. Have you ever used the subject line trick with email marketing? This is a handy little marketing automation hack that can really help improve the performance of your email campaign. Simply put, you can resend an email a few days later to all those that didn't open it with a brand new subject line. We've actually seen open rates increase by over 25% using this tactic. Different copy interests different people. But hold up, what's this got to do with social media? Well, it's actually a social distribution hack. It's a way to significantly improve the reach and the longevity of your owned content. Own media being any web property that you can control and is unique to your business. There's over 1.5 billion pieces of content being released to the internet every day. You need to do a lot to get noticed. You put loads of time and effort into making an amazing blog post or compelling landing page. So you obviously want to make sure as much of your audience sees it as possible. But sharing identical content over and over again doesn't really work. It gets stale and the social algorithms hate it. So you've got to make the old look new, but how? Change up the metadata. Most blogging platforms and landing page creation tools are going to allow you to do this. Take for instance Instapage, HubSpot and Yoast for WordPress. Much like changing the subject line of an email, changing the metadata on your own content is going to help it be seen by a whole new segment of your audience. And you never know, with some amazing new copy and visuals, it could even help it go viral. Another bonus tip. Don't have loads of own content yet? Not a problem. Content creation can actually be really valuable for your social audience and help establish your thought leadership. But surely the benefits can be limited, right? How about you try distributing this curated content
today with a tool like Snippet. It's a tool that allows you to add a call to action to curated articles and then drive traffic back to your site. Just make sure you actually relate that call to action to the content of the piece. Also, when you're creating content, try using a tool like Buzzsumo to find the best articles to share once with proven virality. Tip number four, engineer your marketing. Engineered marketing is the idea of giving something valuable away for free and then selling something related at a later date. And what's going to work really well in 2019 for social media is quizzes. As you can see from this Buzzsumo article, two of the most shared pieces of content on Facebook in 2017 were actually quizzes. And this research from Neil Patel found the most popular content by far was quizzes. Quizzes generated over 50k shares and likes compared to 15k for articles. Sharing quizzes feeds our ego and gives people a glimpse into who we are, what we're interested in and what we value. This is called social currency and I'll come on to that a little bit later. Quizzes can be ideal for qualified lead generation as long as you ask the right questions. Take our T-shaped player quiz for example. This went crazy on social media and we generated nearly a thousand responses in just a few weeks because people love to benchmark their skills against their peers and for us we get some amazing insight into the market for skills where they're abundant and where they're lacking. Pretty powerful for an education company and great news. Quizzes are actually really easy to make with the right tools. So at Growth Tribe, we love a tool called Typeform, but there are also other tools such as Outgrow and SurveyMonkey. Or you could just use the social platforms themselves. Sophie's actually been experimenting with quizzes built using Twitter and Facebook. And so far, so good. Building them natively on the platform offers much less functionality than the tools I mentioned. But the great thing is, as I said earlier, you won't be generating an outbound link, so the algorithms are gonna love you. Plus, quizzes really help you start the conversation with your audience. Which brings me on to tip number five, start the conversation. Most social networks have recently come out and said they're going to favour posts that generate what they call meaningful conversations. They want their users to have a better experience. So yet again, they've killed the reach of page posts in favour of friends and family. Take Facebook for example. They recently came out and said that over the next few months, they'll be making updates to ranking so people have more opportunities to interact with the people they care about most. On top of this, Mark Zuckerberg himself came out and said one of our big focus areas for 2018 is making sure the time we all spend on Facebook is time well spent. Killing the organic reach of page posts increasingly makes Facebook a pay-to-play arena for businesses, so that probably has nothing to do with it though. However, this is not the end of organic social media on Facebook or business. We just need to get smarter. So be conversational. It's best practice on every platform anyway. Start the conversation, mediate the conversation, and get involved in the conversation. But how do you start the conversation? First, you want to be getting clever with your copywriting. Write copy that actually elicits a response. As an example, if you're sharing a blog post, pose a question. You could also ask for people's thoughts on the subject, or think of triggers. Start a discussion on recently trending subjects. David Ogilvy, the godfather of advertising, once said, do not address your readers as though they were gathered together in a stadium. When people read your copy, they are alone. So write copy and post questions for a person not following. Secondly, you're going to want to use the right content medium. Adam Masseri, head of newsfeed at Facebook, recently said, live videos often lead to discussion among viewers on Facebook. In fact, live videos on average get six times as many interactions as regular videos. Many creators who post videos on Facebook prompt discussion among their followers as the posts from celebrities. And with being conversational, just remember the basics. Always respond. Media is billboards, TV, and print ads. Social media is conversational. Your profile is an extension of your business and your brand. Essentially, having no profile is better than having an inactive profile. Social for Business 2K19, tip number six. In 2019, more than 80% of all web traffic will be video. More video content is uploaded every 30 days than the major US television networks have created in the last 30 years. Plus, according to research by Forrester, one minute of video is equal to 1.8 million words to your audience. That's right, tip number six is to use video. It's gonna to continue to reign supreme throughout 2019 and all the social platforms love video. More stats alert. Did you know that social video generates 1,200% more shares than text and images combined? Plus, our good friend Mark Zuckerberg announced the social network is generating eight billion video views daily. Even the sinking ship that Snapchat says they're still generating more than 10 billion video views every single day. Plus, around 60% of this video is consumed on mobile phones so your brand should really make sure it takes a mobile first approach. Now going mobile first is a big topic so if you want to see it I'm happy to make another video about that just let me know in the comments below. Anyway video at Growth Tribe we love it. For us, average engagement on video is 225% greater than photos and 186% greater than link posts. 
We went video first back in 2017, and it was one of the best marketing moves we've ever made. You need to go video. But wait, hold up. Video marketing has huge barriers to entry, right? We love video marketing here at Growth Tribe, but we have two full-time video professionals, as well as a team of T-shaped marketing pros that can contribute whenever necessary. What about a smaller business with less people, less resources, and less time? Well, to help, Paolo recently released this video on creating professional business videos on a budget. You can also use tools like Animoto, Wave, and even Keynote to make videos that are perfectly suitable for social media. Even the big players are using these tools for efficiency. Take this video from the World Economic Forum. This can be easily recreated using a tool like Animoto. Bonus pro tip, try using Square Video for Facebook, Twitter, and the Instagram feed. And obviously use vertical video for Instagram stories, Facebook stories, and Snapchat. Why? Because it means more visual real estate. Extra bonus tip, don't have original video content ideas yet? Well, experiment by repurposing old articles as videos. Tools like Lumen5 actually use a form of AI to turn articles into short video. Perfect for social media. We mock this one up in around five minutes using a repurposed blog post from last year. As a final note on video for social, always post natively where possible. What I mean by that is actually upload the video to the social platform and then post it. We use what I like to call the two week rule. So when we first make a video, we do post a link onto our social platform. But around two weeks later, when the initial traction has dropped off, we're more than happy to upload it again natively to the social platforms because we get to see a spike in the reach. Found an awesome video on YouTube you'd love to share? You could actually get a little bit cheeky and maybe ask the content owner if they're happy for you to share that video. Download that YouTube video and re-upload it natively onto the social platform of choice because you're gonna see much more reach. Okay, time for tip number seven. As I said earlier, you really need to drive engagement early on but I get that that's easier said than done. How can you craft an epic post that people want to like, comment, and share immediately? Great question, and so, so important for owning social media in 2019. My favorite recipe is the steps framework developed by Jonah Berger in this book. This framework is essentially the first real scientific look at what makes things go viral. In the words of Jonah, there's actually a science behind why people share some things rather than others. And remember, social media platforms are technologies. They're not strategies in and of themselves. You have to understand understand why people share some things rather than others in order to use social media to your own advantage. The first part of the framework, and what I would definitely argue is the most important for social media, is called social currency. People share things that make them look good. Think about the last thing that you shared on social media. Why did you share it? Did it make you look smart? Did it make you look cool? Whenever you craft new content for social, ask yourself, is it remarkable? Secondly, start thinking about triggers. What I mean by this is what's gonna to be top of mind for your audience. In the world of social media, a real safe bet is to look at what's trending. You're probably not a TechCrunch or a Lad Bible, so trying to share the absolute latest trends and news is probably not gonna work for you. You're likely gonna be beaten by many, many more publishers that have crazy amounts of resources and they're gonna beat you to the punch. But what you could do is incorporate current trends in your own uniquely branded way. In the run-up to GDPR, we actually released content specifically on how this would affect growth hackers and marketers rather than focus on the full regulation because to be honest, that's insanely boring. While we're on the subject of triggers, I just wanna throw out a special mention to Oreo. They came up with what for me is probably the most timely triggered social post of all time. So take some inspiration. Back during the 2013 Super Bowl, the company capitalized on a massive power outage by tweeting this. Entitled, you can still dunk in the dark, Huffington Post actually proclaimed that one of the most buzzworthy ads of the Super Bowl on Sunday wasn't even a commercial. It was a mere tweet from Oreo during the blackout. Bear in mind that Super Bowl ads are multi-million dollar projects. So this is some achievement and has gone down as one of the best real-time marketing efforts ever. Up next, let's get emotional. As brilliantly coined by Jonah Berger, to care is to share. That's why very often the most viral content is the most emotional content. So when creating content for social media, think about how much high arousal emotion it's likely to create. Does the post inspire and amaze? Perhaps it's funny. Will it hit a nerve, make you angry? Maybe it's controversial. So not everything we can share can be super emotional, but that's okay. Because the next point is practical value. We've looked at why caring makes you share, but this is all about sharing because you care. As an education company at Growth Tribe, we often focus on practical value. Is it actionable? Can you, the viewer, take this information and use it straight away? When it comes to both emotion and practical value, the stats really don't lie. 
take the list of the most viral Facebook content from 2017. As you can see, all of the top 10 most viral pieces of content are either heartwarming, inspiring, amazing, or offer practical tips. The only one that supposedly doesn't is a pie hacks video, which is outrageous because one, who doesn't like pies? And two, in my opinion, pie hacks are the ultimate form of practical value. So why are they all up there? Content that's stuffed with emotion and practical value has way more social currency. So the next ingredient in this virality recipe is public. In the world of consumer goods, this is about visibility. In the world of social media, I like to think about public as social proof. Social proof is a psychological phenomenon where people assume the actions of others in an attempt to reflect correct behavior for a given situation. So what's social proof on social media? For me, this is visible engagement, visible likes, comments, and shares. Have you seen an article or a video with little or no engagement? You're gonna be much less likely to engage with that content yourself, even if you think the content might be interesting, if of course you see it. On the other hand, a post with hundreds or even thousands of visible engagement points is going to appear more credible or of higher quality. This has also been referred to as wisdom of the crowd's social proof. This is when a large group of people appear to be endorsing you. Essentially, this many people can't be wrong. This is why I have to stress the importance of early engagement for your 2019 social strategy. It's a snowball effect. Early engagement equals more reach, which equals more potential for even more engagement. And this sounds sort of obvious, but more engagement therefore equals more engagement. That's social virality. Finally, you've got to wrap everything in a story and tell a good one at that. As Neil Patel recently revealed, you need to share life experiences. Your life is unique. If you can tie your personal experiences into your content, you'll do much better. You and your business's unique experiences are original, more remarkable, and much harder to replicate. So be authentic, be fun, be educational, be thought-provoking, just be different. So moving on, tip number eight, be visual. In a social media world where supply of content far exceeds demand, you have to stand out. Even great content's gonna fail if you don't deliver it in the right way. Let me give you an example. From changing our YouTube social shares, from link posts like these, to photo posts like these, we actually saw 250% more reach and 500% more engagement. Why? Look at how much more visual real estate we're using. The same can be said for Twitter, especially when you're trying to go mobile first. First, posts with lots of visual content are really going to excel. Moz actually did some eye tracking of Google SERPs and found this. Not strictly social media, I know, but it does reveal exactly how powerful visual imagery is on a page. It draws all of the attention. So we talked earlier about video content on social. And while I know a lot of brands are going 100% video on social media now, I get that it's not possible for everyone. And often, it's not actually right for every business. So as best practice number two, at least ensure you're being visual. By that, I mean use emojis, use GIFs, and use effective imagery, imagery that really drives emotion. And please make them original. Never use stock photos. It's the best way to blend in. As it turns out, cheesy stock photos can be a huge turn off for your readers because they're impersonal. I would even argue that most of them are even ridiculous. But hey, I understand that often businesses do turn to stock photography because they don't have the time or knowledge to create high quality professional photos using tools like Photoshop and Illustrator. Well, good news, and here's another bonus tip for you. Use tools. My personal favorite is Canva. It's been a lifesaver for me when I need to quickly create visuals for Facebook ads, blog banners, webinars, and social assets in general. They look great and anyone can use it. Plus Laura, our designer, recommends PictoChart. PictoChart can be awesome for creating popping infographics, which by the way, I highly recommend. They're great for social sharing and content in general. Why? Because they often take complex issues and make them visual. Tip number nine, have a plan, have a schedule. According to this post by Social Media Today, having a core social media schedule can help you create consistency and retention, fill in gaps, create consistent interactions and reach, figure out what works and what doesn't, not pull your hair out, which by the way, I highly discourage, free up more time and develop and outline your brand story. An impromptu approach to social media in 2019 just isn't gonna cut it. There's too much competition, far too much content. As I've said, your social content is gonna have to be absolutely amazing. This means the majority of it is inevitably gonna need to be planned. It may need to be aligned with product launches, the company roadmap, holidays and events. Luckily, there's more tools than I can even count to help you out with this. Two scheduling tools that I would recommend are Hootsuite and Buffer. Hootsuite has slightly more functionality, but Buffer's a little on the cheaper side. At Growth Tribe, our overall content calendar actually has a huge influence on our social media calendar, as does the company roadmap, any product launches that might be coming up, the holiday and events calendar, plus any recurring native social content that we put out on a regular basis. And finally, tip number 10, know exactly what you want. What is your goal for being on social media in 2019? What's your one metric that matters? In the world of social 
social media, it's going to be really easy to get carried away with the vanity metric. So I know I've talked a lot about reach in this video. And yes, it's a great leading indicator to show that your posting and social strategies work. More reach often leads to more eyeballs on your content, so brand awareness, more engagement, and then more web traffic and lead generation ultimately. If the only reason you're using social media is for brand awareness and presence, then fine, reach is okay. But for most of us, Reach is actually a prerequisite for what really matters. So make sure you dig a little deeper. At Growth Tribe, we measure both hard and soft metrics. The soft, or fluffy metrics as I like to call them, include reach, engagement, and sessions driven from social sources. The hard metrics, the ones that really matter to us, include marketing qualified leads that have been influenced. We actually use attribution reporting to do this. And new leads generated where the first touch point was social media. Why? Because lead generation is our one metric that matters. So don't worry about followers. Be engaging and be sharing. A small group of highly engaged followers is far more powerful than a large following of ghosts. Ghosts don't share, brand ambassadors do. They're really going to help you gain that early traction you need for your post to take off. So look, social media marketing, especially organic, is going to get even tougher for businesses in 2019. And don't be surprised to see major algorithm updates that hurt businesses even further. So the key takeaways, number one, know exactly what you want to get out of social media. Two, play to the algorithms and know the algorithms. Three, craft insanely good content and consider the steps framework I discussed. Four, get inventive. Use the tricks I mentioned. Do things differently. It's going to really, really help you out. Remember, you can download my full guide to social in 2019 in the comments below. I've included all my favorite tools for scheduling, monitoring, tracking, and designing, plus insight into how all the algorithms actually work. Plus, I'll shed a little bit more light on the strategy that we use here at Growth Club. I really hope this video is gonna help you excel in social media in 2019. If you like this video, like, and if you didn't, please tell us why. And if you have any further questions, just ask me in the comments below. Till next time, Luke out, roll over stamp.